Hey guys, I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming. Thank you for tuning in. We've got an exciting match for you guys today. This is not going to be like one of those entertainment, action-packed, oriented casts. I want to focus more on decision making and map architecture in this. Um, in the top left-hand corner, we have in the red Zerg trunks, he is Railgan. Now, Railgan is a YouTuber. He creates Zerg educational content, but he also does it for all the races as well. He has recently released a video about the architecture of the new maps. This is a new map, so I wanted to take this opportunity to explore some of the concepts. Uh, excuse me. That said, take a look at his opener. Take a look at the fact that he... Um, is going to trade very aggressively in this game, but he's going to do it on the open terrain, which is very plentiful on this map. Now, that can favor Zerg in various ways, and we'll explore those ways through this game, but while you marinate on those thoughts, let's introduce the Protoss buddy here in the bottom right-hand corner. It's none other than Team Liquid's very own Mana. Now, Mana is a gateway-oriented player, however, he is going to favor a Stargate opener with a little bit of Oracle harassment and some adept play in this game, and that's totally cool. He'll follow it up with a heavy gateway composition, as he is uh, known to do. Boom, there's two more gateways to reinforce the point. And the moment that this Stargate is scouted, we actually see um, a couple Spore Crawlers get dropped for Railgan, and he's going to go ahead and get this third base here around three minutes, four minutes or so, and this is all turning very, very standard. Now, as soon as um, he started the metabolic boost, he pulled off uh, two of the workers on the extractor to get a little bit more minerals. As soon as it's done, he throws two back. This allows him to get a lot more uh, minerals, which means a lot more drones and earlier third base, some more spore crawlers as defense, because he doesn't honestly need or want the gas early on. This is more of a mineral-heavy style. He's getting the layer, sure, but that just opens up more tech opportunities. He doesn't need the gas right this moment. Now, on this map, you'll see that the base, the way the bases are positioned force the Zerg player to begin expanding to his opponent very early. Now, he could take this pocket expansion, but that has its own issues. Um, one thing that Railgan does very, very well is utilize the fact that this map divides along this narrow line. So he'll take everything on the left, his opponent's going to take everything on the right. And in being aware of that, he's going to be able to uh, position his defenses against like warp prisms and stuff in exactly the ways he wants to. Now the Adept's doing a great job here um, obliterating the drone line. Uh, eight workers already killed so far. This is keeping the Protoss up in supply. And this is this is pretty nice here for mana. Um, one thing uh, Relgan might have done better is keep the Lings a little bit behind the Roaches and only bring the Lings in when the um, Adepts shade and then just follow the shades with the Lings so that you can uh, basically either prevent the shade or punish the shade, one or the other. Those are the two key options. Now we've got the... Uh, Oracle doing a little light harassment here, but this is mostly a revelation scouting Oracle type thing. Um, poking in and out, he'll be able to scout this momentarily. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not about harassment. I think mana is going to be going for a very economic style play, so we're going to see two heavy economic styles from both of these players. Super, super late game. This should be a fairly interesting matchup. Now, this is our, only six minutes in. We've got some fairly good creep spread. Creep spread keeps the Zerg very, very safe, and this is going to be a huge role in uh, how how Railgan keeps himself safe from um, zealot harassment, especially charge lots and the warp prism type stuff, or you know even adepts in some cases. We've got the uh, roaches on the way, roach warren, blah, 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 blah. All right, so everything's getting pretty standard here. The one big difference is this infestation pit. Looks like we're going to see a very fast hive out of Railgan. I'm not sure if he's going broodlords, ultras, um, but, but probably leaning leaning more towards, like, cracklings and, and broodlords. Um, yeah, just holding the Zilnaga. This is very crucial. Take a look at exactly what, what Railgan can see. He's basically got both 
all of the Zelnaga Towers. So any kind of um, harassment is going to have to go all the way around here. But that's very feasible for Warp Prism. So going to want to be careful of those attack angles. And of course, um, this right here was something that had to be knocked down. So the Protoss has already knocked this down. This is an attack path that a Zerg can exploit very easily. Run right through here, get directly into the back of of this base or knock this down get into here maybe even do a run by by up in here so good choices this is what um it looks like on the opposite side of the map see this is what got knocked down blocks this right here so might be something railgan wants to consider later in the game but the protoss definitely wants that super early due to the prevalence of lings in this matchup now here's the spire so we're definitely going to be seeing brood lords hive is on the way some lings <laughs> speak of the devil all right, so a lot of this coming down to the creep spread again. This is super good creep spread. Warp prism on the way. Those are those are adepts, and it looks like these four adepts could be dropped into a barrel full of roaches. Nope, he's just going to go ahead and back up off that situation. Looks like ravagers might be swinging in a couple of hydras. Yeah, he's going to have to get out of there. Oh, there's some hydras. There's a spore crawler queen, ravager, hydras. <laughs> All right, so the warp prism gonna make it through by the chin on his uh, by the hair on his chinny chin chin. The adepts not so lucky, and we've actually got a zerg army with about twice the amount of supply as mana. Uh, but the adepts are still making great work uh, of the drone line. Now this is something a zerg player really needs to be look on the um, lookout for. The harassment potential of an economic Protoss is huge, and every one of these kills is uh, going to put him in a much, much better position. You can see the fourth base already in progress for mana, so not really taking any chances here. And this is this is not your typical Protoss. Like, a typical Protoss would still be on three bases, would be trying to get the technology. Nope, mana says screw that. So guys, when you're seeing this on ladder... Just be, be aware of it. You're going to be getting harassed a lot. It's going to be gateway-centric. And uh, you're going to see a lot of bases coming out of your opponent. If you don't, it's probably not gateway-centric. It's probably huge tech-centric. And that means you should expect an attack. Alright, so the Crackling upgrade is in um, being upgraded. We've got the plus two, got the plus one there. Alright, cool deal. Broodlord's going to be on the way. Now, this is, uh, this is a fairly... Mm, costly attack didn't really do a lot it did show um railgan what his opponent had it freed up a little bit of a supply but um trading roaches to build links isn't like it's not that common so i don't know if he was freeing up supply i think it might have just been a mistake but it's cool he's got the economy to support it you can see he's got a very impressive bank he's working towards um towards brood lords I think he might actually wait until Broodlords to, uh, to push out. He's just staying on the creep and defending. Ooh, these Ling's going to be crucial. But he's uh, fighting fighting Zealots with them. Ling's um, really should park on the, the Immortals. Um, yeah, yeah, he's going to take out a lot of the... No, some really good force fields there. Um, prevent the Immortals from getting killed off. So the Ling's ooh kind of wasted there he should have had the wings on the immortals taking those out initially because they weren't really doing that much against zealots it's okay though brood lords are on the way that's all he wanted to do he wanted to buy time for the brood lords any way he could and lings are a very cost efficient way of doing that we've got another base this is actually um taking his opponent's side of the map you can also divide this map along this line here but um i think we'll see it narrow like a cut along that line more likely uh, especially as the meta develops on this map we'll see though could end up being top versus bottom all right ravagers are in production we got the brood lords slowly slowly moving 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 all right so what he'll probably try to do here is attack from the back with the lings get a wrap around here yes no yeah okay so he's Ooh, some really good storms, but it looks like this is going to knock the Protoss army back and expose this base. The base is going to be the key here, so no matter what he trades, Railgan is going to be fine as long as he kills off this base. He doesn't want to overextend, though. We'll see how that ends up working out for him. And yeah, that base is down, so yeah, back up, back up, back up. That's not back. That's not back. 
All right, so he's going to be trading the Ravagers. He's going to trade uh, the Ravager and Hydra Force because he wants these Immortals, and he wants these Immortals bad. But it looks like that's going to create some vulnerabilities on these Broodlords. Yeah, okay, so the Tempest now uh, chasing the Broodlords. Both of them are super slow. It's a turtle chasing a tortoise, but... All right, yeah, he's just going to take this Nexus. Now, while all of this was happening, we've had some Zealots with plus three attack upgrades um, doing some damage here. He actually takes out the Hive, a Lair on the way. Looks like he may try to get the Greater Spire as well, but um, yeah, take a look. The worker count, about tit for tat now. Uh, 36 workers have been killed, most of that in that last attack. Uh, that's kind of rough here for our Zerg hero, but I still think he's got a strong economy. He's got a really good bank. He's got more than enough minerals to replenish these losses. And the most important part is that every time he's trading like this, he is taking out a huge swath of Protoss gas. That is the uh, critical component of a Protoss army, and it's really hard for them to tech switch or even to replenish their tech losses. Zerg can make, you know... 30, 40 Broodlords at once if they really wanted to. I don't know if that would be a good idea, but they could. It's going to be much harder to make 30 Tempests at once. In either case, some great storms going down here on Railgan's army, which is super bunched up. I think this is a little bit of a worthless trade here. He, um, yeah, 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 that was rough. He's uh, about two-thirds of his opponent's army supply now and um, is not looking good for Railgan. However, the creep spread... Uh, should make these reinforcements able to defend if um, if Mana wants to push out too far. But Mana doing very smart and going on creep as little as possible. Notice he's attacking at the edge of this creep. And he swung to the further right side instead of the shorter left-hand side distance. While this is happening, we've got a couple of Zealots uh, doing some work here at the gold. Some Banelings are going to be expended on that. Could be a good choice to make short work of that, but it looks like not all of the Zealots fell. And in any case, we've got the Tempest getting knocked back now. That's going to leave this ground army exposed. The Ravagers doing a great job, great supporting role here. The Roaches tanking a lot of that damage. Tempest getting uh, Corruptors thrown in their faces. Archon going to get killed off by the uh, Roach Ling forces, and that is uh, a dead Zealot there. So no more dead Zealot, no more dead babies. All right, guys. No dead baby jokes. That's not appropriate, Shaft. All right, so canceled. No more Ravagers being morphed in there. Might have been Ravagers, might have been Mainlings. Yeah, probably Banelings because they're being morphed again. All right. So, Banelings, Banelings. Why would you make Banelings? A reason you would make Banelings is these 16 Zealots, these four Archons, just a short throw of Banelings is going to wipe that out. Banelings should take out most of the shields. And then uh, the, there's not a lot of life there left for the Archons. So the Archons replenish their shields so they feel like they are immortal. But once you get rid of the shields, GG. Everything else will be able to clean up very well. Alright, and we've got this base now being taken by Railgan. And again, this is going to be playing into um, how Railgan... Actually, I want to pause it for just a moment. Okay, so this is doubly true with a Broodlord army, but this is true for just about any army with any race. You want to take bases in clusters. So if you have a base here, you want to take this base because you can defend both bases by parking your army here. Okay, if you have your army parked here, your opponent tries to come up here, try to come up here, while they're attacking through a choke point, you have a better concave. You getting reinforcements, they're all on your side of the map. And just by parking here and defending this, you also defend this run by path. So it makes sense and it's easier to defend by parking here. So when you take this base and then you turn around and take this base and you've already had this base, you see how these base choices aren't making the most sense? Now, Railgan's a really smart player, really good guy, and I'm sure he has logical reasons for doing this. But in your typical everyday play, I would say this is a bad decision. Now, if you want to split the map along this horizontal line, cool. That might be the right way to play this map. Who knows? It's still too soon to tell. I think it's going to be divided along this line. Either way, boom. Well, you start here. Go here. Go here. Grab this one. Okay, and then you've got all of this. You're spreading creep along this in a defensive way. And you're spreading creep along this to connect your bases. The next logical place is here because otherwise this is an area where this base can be sieged. 
So you want to grab this. And all of this creep spread, of course, is just an extension of this. So it all makes sense. Now, if you have this base, and you have this base, and you hold this El Naga, you've got this whole area. You can park right here, swing here, swing here, swing here. If you have runbys coming in here, well, you wouldn't have this base. And right here, in this space here, you'd have some spine crawlers. See how, like, positionally, uh, the warp prism can be defeated? All this harassment, all this counterattacks can be defeated just by smart base choices? I think that leaves a railgun very vulnerable in this particular game. So we've got some basic cleanup. Clean up on aisle three. All right, so this game's gonna stabilize for a little bit. Railgun wants to make sure this base gets off without a hitch. And you can see he's even taking advantage of this little area we were talking about. Now, he's keeping his army moving. He's keeping everything um, like morphing, upgrading. He's doing great in all of these aspects. And from this um, platform, he can attack his opponent pretty easily. Now, he doesn't want to commit to it. That's cool, I support that decision. You can do a little poking. Broodlord's going to be pretty effective here. Tempest, um, because he's actually uh, trying to come around here to get a full surround and make full usage of this wide open areas, the Broodlords were a little bit exposed to the Tempest. The Corruptor's going to be able to swing in here, get in their faces. And while this battle here is happening, down here we've had an entire mineral line eradication. Now, just look at that. 36 workers have been killed. That makes the probes half that of the drones. This is the advantage that Railgun needed. Now, no matter what he is trading here, and he is trading tons, it doesn't matter. He's got the better economy. He can afford the trades now. He's got more Broodlords morphing in. Great. Wonderful. Keep the pressure up, bud. <coughs> And we even have more bases being taken on this side of the map. And again, I just want to point out, this is a really, really, really weird way to divide the map. Where do you go from here? Is it dividing like this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't agree with that because you're going to take a base here and a base here. It just, I don't know. I don't think this works. Alright, so the Banelings are completed. It looks like he's going to have Baneling speed here momentarily. Does he wait for the Baneling speed? Does he wait for the Baneling speed? He's going to have to get these Broodlords saved. Ah! No, that thing lived! That thing lived and morphed at the last second! The Tempests are denied their kill! They'll get a Sacrificial Queen. It's okay. Oh, oh man, that gore, dude. That gore. There's like blood gushing everywhere. Alright, so... These Lings... They're expendable. He wants to swing right in here and park it on the mineral line. And that didn't work. He parked in front of the zealots instead. That was a complete zealot wall. But uh, Ling's smart enough to go ahead and get the hell out of there. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Everything's going to be converging on the Broodlord pivot. This is a really, this is the linchpin of the Zerg army. Um, any, the Ling's can move like, you know, this far off screen pretty much. But they have to run back here at all times. And basically, this army is never going to get back here to defend, never get back here to defend. So he's going to be reliant on static defense, which doesn't exist, to defend him against the Zealots. So he's in a rough spot. Should his opponent choose to do any kind of counters? And there we go. We've got uh, some Zealots getting cleaned up there. Don't really want to use Banelings on that, but it's okay. And Corruptor's getting a little bit ahead of the game. That's going to allow the Archons to get some free shots on them. But he's really looking for the perfect angle of attack. That's the key concern here. And there we go. The Broodlord's going to provide that moment. Because now it's up to the Protoss to attack you. And there we go. Ling's going to be swinging in there. The Baneling's going to do a great job against the Archons. But... That was some wonderful storms by the High Templar, and it took care of most of the Banelings before they were able to uh, converge with anything important. However, there's not a lot to deal with these Corruptors. Tempest is going to fall pretty quickly, and the Broodlords, keeping themselves alive, 
Um, for, for the most part, the Corruptors are there to defend them, and the Broodlings are just going to keep those Stalkers completely on the wrong side of the map. Here, let's get a, a little bit of a zoom out. As you see, the uh, the Broodlord's going to be forced back a little bit. This one right here probably going to fall. Uh, nope, nope, maybe, 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 maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. He's like, kill me, kill me, damn it. Life sucks. So, yeah, this is what we were talking about. Very vulnerable bases on this side of the map. It's just too hard to defend that much territory at once. And, yeah, this is uh, turning out to be a fairly eventful game. I'm really enjoying, uh, enjoying it so far, but I... Ink, we can pretty much say this is wrapping up now. Um, with Railgan's um, obvious economic superiority, some great creep spread, uh, upgrade advantage out the wazoo. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely wrapping up. So guys, if you like this kind of uh, content, please, uh, please like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and uh, here momentarily we will uh, go over the highlight reel of what you could and should have learned from this game but um yeah i think the uh the big the big moments here are number one the order in which you take your bases does matter because uh of how you are going to want to defend those bases so make sure that you are um taking bases you can park your army like in clusters like take bases in clusters so you can park your army to defend all of them at once um another thing when you see open maps like this you can do bizarre strategies like broodlord ultralisk which typically doesn't work on a more narrow map um and manage to get away with it but the real thing is is a well hold on, let's uh let's return again see this uh pattern of attack you can swing around here boom get up this ramp you can swing around here, which is what we saw. Boom, get around here. So you're able, as a Zerg player, with your fast units, you can even come through here, come around there. Um, this map allows so many different angles of attack. See, you can, um, if you were coming around here, boom, go around that side, and boom, you can get into this mineral line. There's a ramp here, ramp here, ramp here. There, there's so, like, you could even knock this down. So there's so many different places that a Zerg can attack from that constantly trading makes it nearly impossible, in particular for Protoss. And this is less important uh, against Terran. But Protoss, when they lose a tech unit, even if it's just one, like, in this case, let's say Archon, um, they feel that. When they lose just one Immortal, they feel that because it takes so long to replenish them. If you can kill four Immortals in a battle, and let's just say that um, you're doing a battle every 30 seconds, well, he can only replenish two Immortals every 39 seconds because he has two Robos. He can't afford to build more Robos either. So... That's the benefit of trading, and on open maps, you can get away with it. On a more narrow map, which we'll maybe take a look at later on in the week, you can't get away with it. And that's the big takeaway here. So guys, in your own gameplay, attack from every angle you can, man. And uh, if you have the best macro, if you have a good economy to support it, you will uh, find yourself having quite a bit of success. Um, guys, please consider supporting us on Patreon, $1 a month, $1 pledge could do more for our channel than you could possibly realize. Also, I don't know if this is going to be um, a regular thing, but I'm really strongly considering doing um, daily content. Just quick replay casts like this, going slightly deeper into the, um, the analysis portion like we did today. Um, but not as in-depth as like a crash course. So let me know if you like this format. If you want to see daily content, please let me know in the comments below or on Twitter. I am at the only shaft. Until next time, guys. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.